Hey, what's going on people? Hope you guys are doing good. Today we're gonna to be comparing the ProRes video off of the iPhone 13 Pro versus the Cinema Raw DNG video on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This is a video that was requested, so let's do this. Both of these video formats are for professional use. You really don't wanna shoot in raw video or ProRes if you're doing a video for like Instagram or TikTok. This is gonna be more for post work if you want to edit the video for like YouTube or something like that. That's where shooting in ProRes or Cinema Raw is really going to come in handy. Now, in order to do this, both phones require a different method. Apple makes it really easy because it uses the native app, whereas the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you do have to download a third party app. Let me show you how to do both. All right, so let's start with the iPhone. In case you don't know how to enable ProRes, you're gonna go into your settings, go all the way down until you see camera, then tap on camera, go under formats and make sure Apple ProRes is toggled on. Now, when you go back into your camera app, go under video, you can see a little toggle in the top left for ProRes and you can just toggle that on whenever you want to use ProRes video. Now let me show you how to do it on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Like I said, the iPhone makes it easy because it uses the native camera app. For the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you're gonna want to go into the Play Store and then download an app called Motion Cam. So just do a quick search for Motion Cam and you'll see it pop up. Just download that app, it's free. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and launch it. And inside this app, you'll be able to swipe over to raw video and here you can adjust the settings like your frame rate so this only supports 30 frames per second or up to 30 frames per second um, at least as of right now in the future this could change because it shows you it does have the capability to go all the way up to 120 but there is some limitations right now so hopefully they can update this app and get extra frame rates at least 4k 60 at a later point you can also enable pixel binning you can adjust the crop width and height which means like basically the um, aspect ratio so right now it's shooting in 4000 by 3000 which is around 4.3k but if you just want to do 4k you could do that and then it will actually compress everything and give you a more 16 by 9 look whereas if you're using the full width of the sensor which is 4.3k you can actually crop in in post which is great if you're doing a lot of post work which obviously if you're shooting in raw video you should be and that's how you can shoot raw video on the S22 Ultra. Like I said, it does kind of suck that you'd have to download a third party app, but this app has been working like a boss for me. Let me know if you tried this app and how well it's worked for you. Even though the iPhone makes it easy by using the native camera app, you do get some benefits with uh, motion cam, including the ability to adjust your settings. So you can adjust like your shutter speed, you can also adjust your ISO, you can adjust the white balance, and of course you can adjust the focus. Unfortunately, just like the limitation when it comes to frame rates, you are limited by what camera you can use. You can only select the ultra wide or the standard wide. So you don't have access to every single camera, like the two telephotos or the front facing camera, which is a little bit of a bummer, but nonetheless, this is a powerful app and I can't wait to see what the developers do with it. Even though the iPhone camera app doesn't give you manual controls, it still comes with its share of benefits. For starters, you can do 4K ProRes on the ultra wide, the standard wide, the telephoto, and on the front facing camera. So if I switch it around and then toggle ProRes video on, you can see it's working for the front facing camera. Going back, it works for the standard wide, the ultra wide, and the telephoto. You can see no problems there. And it goes 4K all the way up to 30 frames per second, which is really nice. So you get a lot of benefits. And if you want manual controls, you can always pay for an app like Filmic Pro, which does support ProRes video up to 4K 30 frames per second. And it gives you all the manual controls that you could possibly want, including controls for audio. Okay, so I got some coffee, I got the phones. Let's walk around and get some samples. That way I can edit the footage. Let's see what we can come up with. So, while I was shooting, I just realized something. That you actually can't play back the footage that you shot on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Unless there's an app out there that I don't know of, it just doesn't support Cinema DNG. Now you can view the DNG files, the pictures, but once it's converted to video, there's just no way to play it back. On the iPhone, it plays back ProRes perfectly fine. So that's one advantage to the iPhone when it comes to shooting, at least while you're outside, you know, getting all the footage that you need. So with that being said, let's go ahead and head back into the office so that way we can take a look at this footage. Ah, 
cool. Okay, so we're in the office, we're in the studio. It's time to transfer the video files from the phones over to the computer. Now, with the iPhone, you could do this one of two different ways. You could use AirDrop or you can use a wire transfer. If you're just transferring a few video clips, you know, like five, six videos, you could use AirDrop and it's fine. But if you're transferring multiple video clips, you might want to consider using the wire transfer. The reason being is because if you are transferring things with AirDrop and it loses that connection with your computer, it's going to restart the entire transfer and that could be a big headache if you're transferring a lot of video clips. With the Galaxy S22 Ultra, it supports USB 3.2 speeds, so the transfers are really quick. It's USB-C, so you can plug it right into your Mac or Windows computer and then transfer them over and you won't have any issues. I've yet to have a drop connection when transferring files uh, through a wired connection with my Galaxy S22 Ultra. But there is a catch when it comes to the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Even though the transfer speeds are faster, you have to convert the DNG file to video. And you could do this right on your phone. In fact, I prefer to do it on my phone um, because I don't know how to do it on my computer. But it's really easy. While you're inside the Motion Cam app, you just go to Manage Videos, then tap on the video you want to convert, and then tap on Convert DNG pick the folder that you want the file to be placed in once the conversion is done, and that's it. And you can convert multiple files um, at a time to create like a chain conversion. If you're converting multiple files, it is a pretty long process, but you know, just put your phone on the charger, um, select the files that you want to convert, make sure your screen doesn't turn off or your phone doesn't automatically lock, and that's it. One more thing to take into consideration before we dive into the actual footage is file size. ProRes video is really large. So like a 15 second clip on the iPhone is around like a gig and a half. Whereas a 15 second clip on the Galaxy S22 Ultra is almost four gigabytes. It's damn near double the size and that's a big difference. Here's the size chart of a couple clips that I recorded to give you an idea when you're looking at ProRes versus Cinema DNG. And you can see you're really gonna take up all of your internal space on the S22 Ultra. The good thing is you can connect an external USB-C SSD to your S22 Ultra and then transfer files over that way. It's really painless and easy. So that way you can just move the files over instantly to free up space on your phone. But it is definitely something that you need to be aware of. These video files are massive. So even though the raw video files coming from the S22 Ultra are massive, they do come with a ton of benefits. So let's go ahead and dive into a video editor and compare Cinema DNG to ProRes so that way I can go over those benefits. I think you're gonna like it. So before I dive into the editor, I want to show you guys a couple things real quick. So I have my Cinema DNG files right here and then ProRes right here. If I pull up my Cinema DNG and then open up one of the videos, you can see it's nothing but a bunch of pictures. So basically this is just firing off a bunch of raw images, 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second to be exact. And then it's stitching those images together in order to form a video. Kind of similar how videos are created in general, but in this case, it's much more intricate because it's giving you the actual frames right here. It's kind of cool. Now, if I pull up a ProRes file, you can see the video has already been placed together or put together, so you don't have access to those individual frames. Now, this does have its benefits. You can go inside of one of the DNG videos and then pull up this raw image inside of something like Photoshop, which I'm loading up right now. And then you can edit that raw image and then paste those edits into all the other frames. And you could technically edit the video inside of Photoshop and you can remove things. So that's kind of cool, but that's another video entirely on its own. Additionally, just like a typical raw photo, you can actually edit all of the values inside the video, which I'm going to show you in just a second. Now, Cinema DNG does have its downsides because a lot of video editing applications don't support Cinema Raw DNG video natively. You do have to install plugins that you have to buy. This includes Final Cut Pro as well as Adobe Premiere. You do need plugins in order to support Cinema DNG. The only video application that I know supports Cinema DNG natively is DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and dive into DaVinci Resolve. I have my timeline pulled up right here. This is my raw video, and then this is my ProRes video. If I go into the coloring tools right here, I can select the raw file, go under camera raw, and then if I decode using the clip, you can see all of the values right here that I can edit. This includes the color temperature or white balance. I can edit the tint, exposure, sharpness, highlights, shadows, color boost, saturation, midtone detail, lift, 
gain and contrast. Now what's really cool is if I go back into my timeline right here and I have my raw clip selected, I pull up my inspector, you can see I'm actually scaling the image in order to fill the frame. If I choose to fit to the frame instead of fill, you can see it's a box and that's because this is the native width of the sensor. Like I said, this is shooting 4.3K, not just 4K because it's actually capturing the full width of the sensor not just a crop portion or 16 by nine portion, which is really nice because you're getting all of that raw information. The downside to this is if I play this back, you can see the video is really shaky. So all digital enhancements, including digital stabilization and all of the processing are turned off because it's a raw video. So some people may not like that, but it does give you complete flexibility when editing this video in post, which I'm going to show you now. So if I fill the frame, then go back under all my coloring tools and I have all my raw values. If I crank the temperature all the way up on this video clip, I mean like all the way up and then crank the tint all the way up, you can see it doesn't look that great. I mean, it looks really awful, but let's go to the ProRes clip and you can see I don't have any camera raw values, but we can pull up the uh, wheels right here. Let me crank that temperature all the way up and then crank the tint all the way up Look how degraded this looks compared to this. Like, it's a big difference. Granted, ProRes does hold up pretty well, but that's a big difference. I mean, look in the shadow areas right here, and then look at the raw clip. You could still make out the information, and that's because it's capturing a lot more information versus ProRes. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all of the details of 10-bit raw versus 422 ProRes, because that's a video on its own, just like editing things inside of Photoshop. But just know when you shoot in RAW, you get a lot of information to push around and tweak. So let me reset these values. So I have all of the values reset. Now I'm gonna go back into my RAW DNG video right here and you can see out of camera, this is what it looks like. Super underexposed, but what's great is I can go into my camera RAW information here and I can boost that exposure and look at this, it's not degrading whatsoever. It's bringing back everything. I can increase the colors by doing a color boost. I can increase the saturation. I can drop the shadows. I can drop the highlights. I'm not a cinematographer, so this isn't gonna look the best, but I'm just showing you how much you can push and pull this image before it falls apart. And just re remember, this is from a smartphone. How cool is that? Now let's go into the ProRes image. Let's go under the wheels and let me push around the shadows. So we're gonna push around the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Let's raise the shadows. You can see things are becoming washed out. We'll go ahead and revert back to default. Now we'll raise the midtones. You can see that does pretty good. Midtones tend to hold up pretty well no matter the codec. And if we push around the highlights, you can see if I lower them, there's actually quite a bit of information there. So Kudos to the iPhone for retaining that much for a phone. ProRes is a really powerful codec and a very professional codec, but in the end, it's still not comparable to RAW. The one good thing about this is that the iPhone is still using a lot of computational or AI processing in order to create an image. So even though, yes, it does look a little over-processed and over-sharpened compared to RAW, it does do some, uh, a little bit of handiwork when it comes to dynamic range, which is why you're able to preserve so much detail in the highlights, despite this being uncompressed ProRes. So you could really push around the highlights much more than you could just a regular codec. So they're both really impressive, but you just get tons of flexibility when it comes to Cinema Raw. It's just a little bit of a pain to work with and the files are enormous. But let me know what you guys think of Cinema Raw video on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I'm going to go ahead and play some sample footage. The sample footage is going to be Galaxy S22 Ultra graded shots. So I went ahead and applied a grade, some color correction versus ProRes, which have been slightly tweaked, not as much, but you can see the over-processing or over-sharpening in the ProRes clips versus the Cinema Raw DNG. Let me know what you think of both. Again, I'm not a cinematographer, so the Galaxy S22 Ultra footage looks a little bit weird, but nonetheless, I tried my best, and I think that um, this does showcase how well this footage can hold up and what you can potentially do with it. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. 
Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.